Hi and welcome to Karlskrona in Sweden. Today I'm meeting with Saab for a deep dive regarding their recently unveiled autonomous ocean drone. Robert Rising, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sweden. Thank you for welcoming me. Robert, why is the Saab developing this drone? Yeah, we, we see it basically two reasons. Uh, the uh, first one is uh, from a strategy point of view. We identify this uh, window opportunity for this kind of uh, autonomous ocean drones, larger uncrewed underwater vehicles. So that's the one part. Another one is technical. Uh, we see the technology readiness level is there regarding batteries, autonomy, to name a few. And then it's the legacy part. Saab has decades of torpedo development and even a century of submarine development. So all this put together with the autonomous ocean core, it's a solid foundation to develop from. Uh, what will be some of its uh, capabilities? Uh, how will it be helping uh, sailors? Yeah, the, the aim here is uh, uh, long-range capabilities. And, uh, some examples we see for tasks is uh, typically uh, intelligence, uh, water, seabed characteristics, uh, the signature environment. The other one is seabed warfare, of course, uh, mapping sea bottom, critical infrastructure, cables, pipes. And then, of course, uh, surveillance, reconnaissance, typically with uh, passive sensors or uh, surface threats, subsurface threats. And then last but not least, the payload capability, physical payload. Robert, you previously mentioned uh, Saab's legacy and experience with uh, torpedo systems. Uh, speaking of which, uh, may uh, future versions of the uh, autonomous ocean drone be fitted with uh, Saab's uh, lightweight torpedo or other effectors? Yeah, uh, we think that Saab has a unique position to, to actually do this by having both products and expertise in uh, all necessary fields like C2, uh, the Louvre obviously, and uh, torpedoes. So uh, uh, we're currently designing, it's a pure ISR version of this vehicle. Uh, but if the next step is to be taken with effectors, we think that Saab is sort of pole position to do this. Uh, it's called uh, Autonomous Ocean Drone. Uh, so is it limited to the Baltic Sea area of uh, operations or can it conduct uh, blue water operations? Blue water as well, for sure. Uh, we see no limitations. It's, we see it as a customer decision, really, to uh, how it will be used. So no limitation in that way. Uh, speaking of customer, I uh, believe uh, Saab Cocoons received an FMV uh, contract back in August for uh, something called the LUV, L-U-U-V. Yeah. How does this relate to the uh, autonomous ocean drone? Yeah, that's right. And we're really happy to have the Swedish customer on board. It just happened uh, before this summer. They entered the project. And then we had the concept ready and uh, part of the design. They jumped into it and... Uh, I cannot give too many details on that particular uh, vehicle, but it's an ongoing project, uh, planned launch next year and start sea trials uh, next spring. Sub mentioned uh, this is meant to operate uh, alongside crude submarines. Uh, how can it complement, uh, for example, A26 or other submarines? And uh, how do you achieve this? As we design it, it's really uh, submarine-like in the streamline and uh, we see it as a standalone or if it's a submarine nation with other assets uh, as a co-pilot or uh, an extra asset to the to the manned platforms so we soon see no limitations there really and uh, regarding uh, integration with the uh, a26 uh, series of submarines uh, can it be deployed from the a26 yeah, that's the idea. On this, uh, for the Swedish customer, of course, that's of interest because they have this MMP on the coming A26. And uh, this we're looking at here will be fully possible to, to integrate. Are we talking both uh, full uh, docking, so to speak, and get into the submarine? Or we're also looking a lot of soft docking where you come close to the platforms and do your information exchange. So I have all those possibilities. If you want to get in certain operation areas, so we don't want to go with a manned system, you have this one as an asset to get into that area. Uh, you 
showcased uh, this for the first time at uh, MSPO in Poland in uh, September. Uh, is this part of uh, your offer to Poland? Yeah, I think we uh, in the offer to Poland, we will have all these uh, possibilities, uh, not only the, the A26 derivatives, but everything in within our portfolio that can uh, help that that deal to to fit the customer. And uh, Robert, what is the current status of this uh, project? Yeah, as I said, it's ongoing. It's under production right now, and we see it's a very intense winter now, gathering everything. And uh, as I said, the plan is to launch it next year, first half, half next year, and start the seed trials. Uh, so it's a really tight plan, but we, we believe it's fully doable. And uh, would you say, thanks to that FMV contract, uh, Swedish Navy will be the launch customer for the product? Yeah, certainly. We see a, a big benefit in uh, what we call a triple helix with the, with the industry and the government agency and the, uh, the academia. And now we have FMV on board, the Swedish customer and end user. Well, we see it's, it's a great benefit from both sides. All right, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you.